you could be at risk of Medicare surcharges. So they're important to understand, especially if you're doing Roth conversions, um, and also if you're facing RMDs. That is the subject of this video. Welcome to another episode of the Financial Fast Lane. My name is Lane Martinson. And if you're new to this channel, we discuss retirement planning topics, specifically for those age 50 and over. Now today, we're talking about Medicare surcharges or the risk of Medicare surcharges. So there are certain things that happen um, that can cause your Medicare premiums to be increased. And so you wanna understand that and uh, be able to include that in your planning. So the, the additional premium for Medicare or the surcharges are based off of your income. And I'm gonna show you that and break that down for you. But um, you may look at it and think, well, my income will be below the, those thresholds, and so um, I don't need to worry about uh, any surcharges on my Medicare premiums in the future. Well, there's, there's a number of things that could cause your income to spike. Um, if you've been a really good saver and you have a large 401k, for example, or IRAs, um, when you hit RMDs, the required minimum distributions potentially could cause your income to cross over these thresholds, which would also cause you to have to pay more for Medicare premiums. And so you could, you could have some capital gains that are realized in any certain year. Maybe you sell a piece of, of real estate or something like that. Now, just let me just go kind of real basic here on Medicare. Medicare has four parts, right? Part A, B, C, and D. So Medicare Part A, there is no premium, assuming that you have worked for at least 40 um, quarters, which is equivalent to 10 years of work history, paying into the, you know, the FICA tax. And so if that's the case, then your, your Part A would have no premium. And Part A covers hospitalization. So that would be like inpatient, hospital services. Now part B, C, and D all have premiums associated with them. And there's some different options uh, you know, that you would need to consider if you haven't yet come into Medicare. Now part B um, premium, that, part B covers um, outpatient or you know, medical doctors, all of the stuff that you might do outside of the hospital. Um, part C is advantaged plans, which is a kind of a different type of plan. And then D is for the prescription drugs. Or, or, uh, um, and so each of those have their own premium associated. Now, in 2021, the standard premium for Medicare Part B is $148.50 per month per person. And so if you're married, then, you know, um, obviously it'd be two times that. For your household. Now, so Medicare premium surcharges are going to be on top of that base premium for Medicare Part B. Um, and, and a really important thing to understand is that Medicare has a two-year look back. So when you are um, age 63, that year, the, the year that you're 63, uh, whatever your tax return is, that's what's going to be used to determine your Medicare premiums at age 65, two years later, right? Um, and so they're always looking at your, your modified adjusted gross income from two years ago, two years back. And so um, if your modified adjusted gross income crosses the thresholds, then you're going to have IRMA. So IRMA is an acronym for Income Related Monthly Adjusted Amount. Okay. And so let's take a look at the thresholds here. If you're filing single and your income, your modified adjusted gross income is less than $88,000, you would not have a surcharge. If you're married filing jointly and it's under $176,000, there would be no surcharge. So the base premium uh, for 2021 for Medicare Part B is at $148.50 right, per month. Now, if your income is over that 88,000, if you're single, 
or over that 176,000 if you're married filing jointly, then you have your first surcharge level, $59.40 per person per month, right? So then you can see what the total premium would be. And then the next threshold is 111,000 if you're single, 222,000 if you're married filing jointly. And it's, it's 148.50, so it's essentially double your premium at that point for a total premium of $279 per month. And then you can see that as the thresholds go up, uh, the premium goes up accordingly, okay? Now, you might look at that and think, well, I'm not in danger of my income crossing over some of these thresholds. But like I said, your income can spike for a number of reasons, and uh, doing Roth conversions is one of those. So the thing, the thing to keep in mind, though, is that um, if, you're, if you um, experience these surcharges, um, they're going to reevaluate it each year based on the next year's modified adjusted gross income. And so um, it's not going to be necessarily a long-term thing, right, if, it's, if it comes from a spike. Now, uh, the, in 2021, for Part D surcharges, it uh, looked like this. And then if we look at the total surcharges for Parts B and D, um, these are the additional amounts that would go on top of the base premium. Now, if, you, if, if your in, um, income is high and, it, and it's, it's caused IRMA to kick in and you're being charged, um, there is an appeal process if your income is going to drop the next year. And you're going to want to use the SSA form 44 is how you would appeal the IRMA surcharge. And there's only certain things that are, they're going to allow you to appeal if you stop work, you know, retiring and so forth. But um, you can't, so you can't appeal if, if there's a, a reason to do so. But after each year, they are going to look at the modified adjusted gross income. And so that would come down by itself eventually. Um, if your income truly comes down. Now, I think it's really important to know that future distributions from a Roth IRA do not count towards your, your modified adjusted gross income. And so Roth conversions can actually be a strategy to help prevent your, um, you know, your RMDs from pushing you up into these higher thresholds. And so the, the ideal time to get Roth conversions done would be prior to age 63, because then you, you, have, you don't have to deal with the surcharges whatsoever. Um, but if you're 63 or later, um, then, then you have to deal with this. And, but, but then again, you have to consider the, the cost of not uh, completing Roth conversions as well. It just means it's gonna cost you a little bit more in the form of these surcharges in order to get some money converted so I hope that you found this, this helpful. Um, no one likes to be surprised with uh, expenses that they didn't see coming, and the IRMA is, is one of those. But like I say, it's generally gonna be short-lived. You can get it reduced. In the worst case scenario, if you're doing Roth conversions, once the Roth conversions start, or excuse me, once the Roth conversions stop, that following year, you should be able to get your premiums um, below the, the surcharge thresholds. So again, I hope you found this helpful. In the description below, if you want a chart with, with all of these numbers in more detail, um, there'll be instructions on how you, you can get that chart and um, all the details that you would want to know there. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I hope you would do that. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode of the Financial Fast Lane.